In JavaScript, you have two types of functions. You have the normal functions created with a function keyword, and you have the arrow functions created with an arrow-like symbol. Arrow functions was introduced in ES6, and it allows you to write functions in a simple and easy way. But arrow functions has some differences when compared to normal functions. So using examples, let's look at some of those differences in this video. To create a normal function, you have the function keyword, then you have the name of the function. Let's call this multiply. Then you specify the argument that this function expects so we we'll have num1 parameter num2 parameter and in this function we're just going to do some multiplication logic we have num1 times num2 assigned to the result variable and then we return result this is a normal function now if we want to transform this into an arrow function here is what this would look like first we have the multiply variable you can declare this variable using var let or const let's use const then you have the assignment operator and the syntax of an arrow function is you have the argument you have the arrow which is the equal and greater than sign and then you have the function logic this is the arrow function so here in the argument we can specify our num1 and num2 placeholders and then here we can have const result equals num1 times num2 return result this is the arrow function equivalent of this normal function now if the return statement is the only thing in the arrow function you can make it simpler what do i mean let's say we don't have this line and here instead of returning results we return num1 times num2 so return the value from this expression now with arrow functions if you only have the return statement you can even take that return statement out and you can remove the curly braces and you can have everything on one line like this so constant multiply equals to you have the argument and then you have num1 times num2 this is the same thing as having the curly braces and having a return and having the closing curly brace like this so with arrow functions you can see how it allows you to write shorter functions but the syntax of writing normal and arrow functions functions is not the only difference so let's look at five other differences between these functions one difference is there is no argument object in arrow functions what do i mean by this currently i'm in my browser console and the reason why i left my editor is because my environment here is node and i want to use the browser environment instead so let's say we have a function print we'll console log arguments and then I close the function. You can see we don't have any arguments variable declared here. But if I execute this function and maybe I pass a couple of arguments, let's say 1, 10, true, a string of decode, and maybe an empty array. You see what happens? We have an argument object. And in this object, you can see we have a key of 0. And for that key, we have the first argument, which is 1. Here we have the second argument, 2, third one, fourth one, fifth one. So with normal functions, there is an argument variable which is created by default and that variable would hold all of the arguments that are passed to the function when that function is executed but this is not the same for arrow functions so I've cleared my console let's say we have the print function using arrow function so I have this I have my arrow then console.log arguments then I close the function now if I call print and let's say I pass 1 10 true decode and the empty array you see we have an error reference error argument is not defined that is because in arrow functions the argument variable is not created another difference is that arrow functions do not create their own this binding what do I mean by this in normal functions a this variable is created which references the objects that call them let's see an example let's say I have an obj object here we have a name property of decode age property of 200 I am not 200 years old we have a print method and here we have a normal function Function, and then we say console.log this and we close the print function and we close our obj now if i call obj.print you can see that console.log this 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 here points to obj because obj is the object that called the print function so you can see obj is age name and the print function now let's see another example i still have obj here but here i'm going to say obj2 and instead of console logging this here i'm going to declare another function here here and I call this print2 and in print2 I'm going to console log this and below here I'm going to execute print2. So now if I have obj2 dot print by executing this print method then we have this code run which is the declaration of print2 and we execute print2 inside of print. Now if I run this you can see that the this in print2 is pointing to the window object and the reason for that is the way this works in functions is that like I said this would point to the object 
object that is calling the function so the this in print would point to obj2 because here we have obj2.print but inside here we have print2 and there is no object calling print2 so by default this would reference the window object which is the global object but now let's see what happens with an arrow function let's say i have my object like this we have name we have age we have print now instead of using a normal function with a function keyword i'm instead going to use an arrow function so it's going to be the bracket then we have our arrow and then i'm going to console log this now if i call obj.print like this like we saw in the normal function the this in print pointed to obj but if i execute this you can see that the this in print is pointing to the window object and the reason for that is because arrow functions do not create their own this binding so if you try to reference this here what would happen is that this would point to the value of this before this function was created and let's see another example so coming back to this example where we had a normal function this was obj2 for print we have the normal function but for function function 2 let's instead make that an arrow function so i'm going to have const print 2 then i have my arrow here now when i call obj2 dot print like you remember in this print function this function will be created print 2 and then we execute print 2 inside of print now because we're using a normal function for print the this variable in print would point to obj2 because we are calling print with obj2 but for print 2 we have an arrow function which means it would not create its own this binding so when you try to reference this what would happen is that this this would point to the value of this before print 2 was created which means it's going to be the value of this in print let's execute that to find out so if i execute this now you can see that the this in print 2 now points to obj2 because print 2 does not create its own this binding because it is an arrow function therefore the this reference would point to the value of this in print and because print is called with obj2 this this would point to obj2 now if you want to learn more about this i have a video for that i'm going to link below so you can check out and you can learn about the dynamics of this in functions another difference is that arrow functions cannot be used as constructors with normal functions you can create constructors which serve as a special function for instantiating an object from a class let's see an example let's say we have a class called animal and then here we have our constructor which like i said is a special function for instantiating an object from this animal class in this constructor we would have two arguments we have the name and we have norm of legs then here we have the this variable this this would point to the object that is instantiated from this animal class so for that object we have the name property assigned to the name argument we have the same thing for norm of legs and then we close our constructor and let's say this class also has a method called say name and what this method simply does is console.log then we have my name is and then we interpolate the name property on the object and i'm referencing that object using this then now we close our class so now let's say we want to instantiate an object from this class we would have const let's say dog then we have the new method and then we have the animal class and the argument that will pass to this class is going to be for the constructor so here i'm going to say bingo as the name and for number of legs i have four because bingo has four legs and then let's say i have another object called bed animal and bed is going to be called steer and bed has two legs so now if i call dog dot say name you see my name is bingo bingo is the argument that is passed to the constructor and by calling say name we have my name is and then we call the name property on the dog object same thing for bed bed dot say name you have my name is steer so here you can see that in the animal constructor we used a normal function approach but we cannot use an arrow function as a constructor let's say we have our class like this and for this constructor i'll have the equal sign here and then i have the arrow here so that it's now an arrow function if i try to execute this see we have an error it says classes may not have a field name constructor why does this error exist because by doing it like this javascript assumes that we are creating a constructor field but we actually want to create a constructor function so because for arrow functions you need to have your function expression like this which is assigned to a variable here it assumes that we are creating a constructor variable and assigning this function expression to it but that is not what we want we want to create a constructor function so you cannot use an arrow function 
function in this case you would have to use a normal function so if i come back here and paste this here we have a normal function so everything would work but i can actually use an arrow function for the say name method let's say i have it like this say name equal to and then i have my arrow function like this now let's say i create a dog now if i call dog dot say name you can see everything works fine so this say name is seen as a field and I can create as many fields as I want and I can use arrow functions for that. Another difference is that arrow functions cannot be declared. What do I mean by this? When you want to declare a function in JavaScript, you have the function keyword and then you have the name of the function. Let's call this print hello. And then you have your curly braces and this function can do anything. Let's just say console log hello. Then now I can call print hello. Print hello here is a declared function, but the fact that you are using the function keyword doesn't mean you are declaring a function for example if we have const print hello to and we have the assignment operator and then we have the function keyword like this and here it simply says console log hello to now in this case print hello to is not a declared function print hello to is a variable which is assigned this function expression and this function expression here involves the function keyword without a name so when you use the function keyword with a name then you have a function declaration when you use the function keyword without a name you have a function expression and if you notice this actually looks similar to arrow functions so let's say i have const print hello 3 then i have my arrow function and here i'm going to say console.log hello 3 like this and then I close the function this is a function expression using the function keyword this is a function expression using arrow function so what do you see here with function declarations you need to have the function keyword and you have the name of the function but with arrow functions you cannot declare a function instead you need to have a variable which as you can see here is print hello 3 and then to that variable you assign a function expression arrow functions are function expression which you need to assign to a variable one last difference we'll be looking at in this video is that arrow functions cannot be assessed before initialization hoisting is a concept where a variable or function is lifted to the top of its global or local scope before the whole code is executed and this makes it possible for such a variable or function to be assessed before initialization let's see an example I'm back here in my code editor because this is the best place to explain this difference so I have this here I have the print name function declared and then I try to assess it even before I actually declared it and here I have console log hello if I run this file this would work fine without errors the reason for that is because before the whole of this file everything in this JavaScript file before it is executed this function is actually hoisted to the top so by hoisting it to the top let's say somewhere around here I don't know exactly where JavaScript puts it that makes it possible for us to assess print name before the line it was actually declared in the code but let's Let's say I have an arrow function here. Let's say I have const print name. I have my equal sign and then I have my arrow here. If I try to run this, we now get an error. It says cannot reference print name before initialization. So what is happening here? Like I said, arrow functions cannot be assessed before they are initialized. The print name variable is actually hoisted because all variables functions in JavaScript are hoisted. But what happens is when you declare a function, remember declaring a function involves the function keyword and the name of the function by declaring a function like this this whole function is hoisted with the logic in the function but when we use an arrow function like this the print name will be hoisted but it is not hoisted with an initial value and that is why it says you cannot assess print name before initialization this is the line where we actually initialize it so print name can be hoisted to the top here here, but it doesn't have an initial value and that is why we have an error now the reason why we don't have an initial value is because we are using const if we used const or we use let I also try to run this you see we have a problem of initialization because with const and let the variables are hoisted but they are not hoisted with an initial value but let us say we use var when you use var with the variable the variable is hoisted with an initial value of undefined so if I come here now and I try to run this you see now we have a new error print name is not a function when you use var print name will be hoisted with a default value of undefined and we can verify that let's say i call console log print 
name let's say i call that before i execute print name here if i run this you see we have undefined here before we have print name is not a function so what happens here is that calling print name like this is almost like you're calling undefined like this and as you know undefined is not a function so which still brings us back to the fact that because arrow functions involves function expressions which are assigned to variables in this case print name you cannot assess or use such function before the line that they are executed so if i come down here and i try to execute print name after the line where the function was created i try to execute this you see everything works correctly so only declared functions can be hoisted arrow functions cannot be hoisted now there can be more differences between normal functions and arrow functions arrow functions allows you to write simple functions one line functions and all those things as we have seen but you should also know that it comes with its own limitations and as you can see in this video we have seen five ways in which normal functions are different from arrow functions if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share with others and also subscribe for more concepts in javascript i'll be simplifying on my channel